Today is uh, May the 31st, 2011, and what I'm going to do is do some demonstrations, some experiments, if you will, on um, square wave testing of audio amplifiers. This is an old amplifier. I've had it on uh, my other YouTube videos. This is a channel, an exact duplication of a channel out of an MA-230. uses the MA-230 transformer. Ordered back from Macintosh back in 1977. Uses a pair of six CA7s, and the rest of the circuitry is the same. I got away from those 7591s. And this is the old Dynaco Mark III with the uh, DIY Poseidon board in it. I changed it out from the 6AN8. Is, uh, I found out that the 6AN8s were uh, getting harder and harder to come by. That's not the, the point here, of course. The point is that what we're going to do is test both amplifiers and compare them square wave output and uh, here's your equipment we'll be using we're going to be using this uh, Tektronix function generator it's an FG501A and we'll be watching its output here on, on a voltmeter we're going to run it at 8 watts which will be 8 volts <clears throat> across an 8 ohm load uh, first thing we're going to do is do our sanity check here's a 9 to 10 hertz square wave nice and square uh, rise time is good really looks great um, we'll be watching it on two oscilloscopes this one too so it's not too bright there there's 10 Hertz but anyway we'll go up we just want to make sure that all of our equipment is looking really good there's 10 there's a hundred Hertz so we're going to be examining this square wave very carefully there's our hundred Hertz square wave there's a kilohertz there's our frequency right there, right out of kilohertz. Nice and square, looks really good. 10 kilohertz. Looking, looking good. Do the same over here, just for a good sanity check. Whoops, I wanna be, wanna be fumbling around here. There we go, 10 kilohertz. And last but not least, this will be way out of the range of a uh, audio amplifier. Here's a 100 kilohertz square wave. Still looking pretty good. A little bit of a little bit of a anomaly right here in the leading edge, but something pretty insignificant for, for what we're going to be testing. I've never seen an amplifier audio amplifier pass a 100 kilohertz square wave. So anyway, this is our setup. This is, uh, this is what we're going to be driving the amplifier with, these nice, clean square waves. Now we'll get to the amplifiers. Our first amplifier will be the uh, Dynaco Mark III. Set up it, it's a very well-performing amplifier. Does a good, solid 50 watts, 20 to 20 kilohertz sine wave with uh, very low distortion. So it's, uh, it's a good model to use. And here's what our outputs look like running at about a kilohertz right here here's our square wave output not bad looks pretty good there's a little bit of there's just a little tiny bit of overshoot right there but uh, nice and square sure don't see anything wrong with that there she is on, a, on another one this one's a little brighter we'll turn it down a little bit there we go you can see the overshoot slightly I don't think that's anything to uh, worry about okay let's go to uh, 100 Hertz there's just a little bit of slant in it there and I'm not exactly sure how to interpret that this one is slanting um, this one has a uh, negative slope the bottom has a positive slope There she is over here. I, I only switch between the scopes, but sometimes you can see see things better on one than the other. This one's a bigger display, so it's the same thing. A little bit of slope. The ringing, in, the overshoot is about the same. No big deal. I mean, this is the Dynaco Mark III. What good performing amplifier. You can see a little bit of slope in there. Now let's go. See, this is at 99 to 100 hertz. Now let's go to 10 hertz. Our 10. Now we have a uh, very negative slope and a very positive slope. So 
so it changes considerably. Same thing here. There we go. Well, that's what she looks like. Not exactly sure how to interpret that, but we know we're putting in, uh, we know our input that we're driving it with is very clean, very nice rise time, very flat. Um, so there you go. That's how the amplifier mo modifies it. And we're going to go, we're going to move over uh, to this amplifier and hook it up. Okay, now we're on the um, the uh, MA230 channel and uh, we're running them, I think I mentioned a couple of times, we're always running it at about 8 watts, which would be 8 volts squared across 8 ohms. We're pumping it into these, our dummy loads up here so we can maintain our 8 ohms. Here we are again at about a kilohertz and here's our square wave. This one is actually about the same. I can't say as I see a lot of difference, maybe ever so slightly less of a ringing there, but nothing that uh, you'd make a big deal out of. That's at this uh, kilohertz. Get it over here and see if we can see anything any better. There it's stretching it out. There's the leading edge up here again. I don't find much fault in that, I'll tell you. Okay, now let's go to 100 hertz. Still looking good. I don't know if it's got more or less slant. This will have to be something that we can analyze after the video. There is a little bit of slant in there, but very, very little. I think a little less than the Dynaco. Now we'll go to 10 hertz. And we get something similar. We get a, a very negative slope here and a, and a positive slope on the uh, rising portion. For whatever that's worth. That's what they do. That seems to be a profile of uh, some, some uh, quite good per, uh, functioning audio amplifier, vacuum tube audio amplifiers. Now, we forgot to test it t at 10 kilohertz. Let's do that. Let's make a let's make a quick one here. Let's go up to way over. Okay, now we're up to uh, we're back up to our kilohertz. There's 10 kilohertz. Still pretty good. There it is, 99.25. There's 10 kilohertz. This is the uh, the Mac design. 10 kilohertz. Now I've always been told that it takes uh, an amplifier that'll pass about 10 times the fundamental frequency of a square wave to make it nice and square. So that means that it should, that implies it should perform pretty well up to 100 kilohertz. We see a little bit more of an anomaly in there. Now I'm going to start raising the frequency. Wrong way. And we will see that at a frequency pretty high up, we're up at 15, 17 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, there's our 20, 20 kilohertz, oops, now we got to go to a different range, the way this oscillator runs is kind of funny, let me go get back down here to uh, something low because it, it increases quite rapidly. Okay, now we're back up to 6 kilohertz and you'll see when we get up, I think to about 40 or 50 kilohertz, there's 24 kilohertz. Still looking not too bad. As we get up higher and higher, our square wave is starting to go away. And our square wave is now almost a sine wave. So at these frequencies at 70 kilohertz, 70.8 kilohertz, we no longer have a square wave coming out at all. We've, we've lost the, the top, there it is, I'm lowering it now. That's back down to 44 kilohertz. As we go lower and lower, then uh, starts turning back into what can be recognized as a square wave. Down at 20 kilohertz, it's still pretty good. Looks like a, still looks like a square wave. And as, of course, as we go lower and lower, it, it really squares up. There it is, 2.7 kilohertz. And it looks pretty normal again. 
So that's the square wave testing of amplifiers and how it can be interpreted. Uh, I don't have a lot of uh, wisdom on that. I will go back and do one more here and, and, and let's do the, uh, the high frequency. I forgot to do the high frequency on the Dynaco. So let's uh, hook that one up right quick. Okay, we got the Dyna hooked back up. And here it is, it's 2.8 kilohertz right where we left off with uh, the other amplifier. And let's start running it back up and let's see where our sine wave turns into, a, our square wave turns into a sine wave here. We're up at 8.7 kilohertz. Let me back this thing off, maybe that'll work better. It looks like it uh, turns into a sine wave at about 40 kilohertz. I'd call that a, I would recognize that more as a sine wave than a, um, than a square wave. 43 kilohertz pretty much goes away. There you go. But as we start lowering it, whoops, I'm still going up. If we go really high, up there at 60, 70 kilohertz, man, can't recognize that anymore. But it's, it starts squaring off again at, uh, right there. And looking pretty good, 13. So well, there's the uh, high-end frequency response of, of the diamond code. So uh, hope you enjoy these videos. Hope they help. I decided to throw one more amplifier in here because the other two compared so closely. I wanted something that was slightly different. If I could find something, this is a an old Fisher Model 70A. It's a beautiful amplifier. I think they were made. Uh, well, about 1959, 60, made a few years uh, during that time. Used the 5V4, a couple of 5881s, a 12AT, and a 12AU7. It's in very good shape. This is on some of my other videos, but I'm going to use it and uh, we'll see what it looks like. I'll try to do a little bit better job with the camera, too. Again, we've got the output adjusted to about 8 volts, 8.00 exactly. Um, and here's its output. There it is at one kilohertz. I'm trying to hold this back. It's got quite a bit more ringing as we can see here in the beginning. Quite a bit more at a kilohertz. So it has some overshoot and ringing. Let's look at it here. Get a better picture. Yeah, quite a bit of ringing up there. Not that this is a bad amplifier. I think they sound marvelous. Same overshoot uh, here and a bit of ringing at kilohertz. Okay, well, let me keep it back here. Let's go on up. Let's start raising our frequency up to, there we go, up to two kilohertz. Still quite a bit of ringing, two kilohertz. Now let's go up times 10. So now we're up at 20 kilohertz. Ooh, looks pretty bad, huh? Yeah, not too good up there. So as marvelous as these old amplifiers are, um, they, they certainly don't have the response of the newer ones. There it is again. Get the sink there. Yeah, pretty funky looking huh so let's uh, watch the frequency and um, the square wave at the same time as we start backing down there we go 17 kilohertz wow it's just it's, it doesn't start giving us a flat top there until about 7 kilohertz so this amplifier I would say uh, might have a sound unique to it. <laughs> I don't know exactly how to describe that. As, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not exactly sure how to uh, to interpret all these uh, square wave responses of these amplifiers. It's going down. I'm trying to keep both of them on there at once, and at the same time be able to see the, the ringing. That's at one and a half kilohertz. Let's go down to a much lower frequency. And we're at one tenth of that, 157 hertz. Ah, the low frequency response doesn't look too bad. Still got the, still got the, still got the ringing in there though. 
at 157 hertz. And as we continue to go down, got to go to another range and then go back up. We are down at 100 hertz. Getting pretty slanty in there. Getting a lot of slant in the top and the bottom. With uh, a little less ringing. Let's go down to uh, something pretty low here. There we are at 16 hertz. Well, it seems like we we lost our we almost lost our ringing there. And keep it in sync. Hard to sync on that. Sorry, all the fumbling. That's its low frequency response. Got it 16 hertz. Let's see if we can get a better sync over here. It is at 16. And I guess to be fair, we have to go down to, to 10. Just like we did on the others. Okay, there we're at 10 hertz. And there it is. Getting it to sync is a bit of a chore. Can get a better sink over here. There we go. Very interesting. Anyway, that's the old uh, 70A running at 8 watts. Doesn't seem to uh, do real well up at uh, higher frequencies. 2 kilohertz. No, I'm sorry, 100, 100 hertz. More ringing, a little overshoot. Kilohertz. It's a little overshoot. 10 kilohertz, and it's gone kapui. Anyway, for what it's worth, that three amplifier is documented. The old uh, Fisher 70A, the uh, reproduction of the Mac MA30 channel and the uh, Danico Mark III.